You right now listening to this video might be winning a large chunk of silver for free. Two of you actually, so your chances just doubled. All you have to do is click one button, subscribe. Once we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to jump out of an airplane and announce the two winners mid-flight with a GoPro attached to my helmet so you could watch it all unfold. Yes, this is serious. I'm going skydiving in celebration of 100,000 subscribers so you can celebrate winning while I'm literally falling out of the sky, hopefully not to my death. Make sure you don't miss it because this will be a beautifully horrific sight to see. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have a lot to discuss in this video. We're talking about some serious stuff. U.S. wars against Russia, Iran, and threats against China yields massive silver shortage. And this is also including semiconductors. National stockpile is insufficient. We do not have enough silver and silver wins wars as we need a lot of silver for missiles and satellites and and drones and anything you could think of involving military and our defense department they need silver but it is starting to become obvious that the silver shortage is a reality not only just for going green or solar panels or electric vehicles but also for military and as the united states is currently in five different wars you can see how this is going to be a serious problem but before we jump into this heavy article i wanted to ask you guys what do you think about that i'll announce the two winners your name could potentially be called out of my mouth while I am falling out of the sky or might have to right before I jump out of the airplane because if I'm skydiving, it might be too noisy or maybe once they pull the parachute, you guys will be able to hear and I could announce the two winners' names then. Um, I will have a GoPro though so you guys will be able to watch the action unfold but I just think that's such a cool idea and I'm serious. I am... I'm not afraid of heights to the degree where I'm, you know, I'm a amateur skateboarder. I've jumped down 10 stairs, you know, but that's a little different than jumping out of an airplane. So it's definitely going to be scary, but I think it will be such a cool idea to hit that milestone. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below and like the video if you think that's a good idea as well. So anyways, uh, yeah, U.S. wars against Russia, Iran and threats against China yields massive shortage of silver and semiconductors, national stockpiles insufficient. So um, shareholders in some of the largest silver mining companies getting crushed by the Silver Institute's incompetence. So the Silver Institute's lack of warning, leadership, and expertise has resulted in significant consequences for shareholders in the mining industry. Under their watch, the Department of Energy deleted silver as a critical mineral despite our massive silver shortage, which is just insane and it shows how corrupt. This was not by accident. They didn't just forget or they're not really saying that there's 50 other minerals because I, I looked at the list. There's like 30 to 50 other minerals. I haven't heard of the majority of these minerals names and they're saying that these are more important, more critical than silver, which is needed for everything, especially including military, as the U.S. Defense Department raids our silver stockpiles. It's just insane that this happened. So this decision left many questioning why silver was not listed as a critical mineral in the first place. The answer lies in the Silver Institute's failure to educate lawmakers on the importance of silver used by the primary users of silver in the U.S., which are undisputedly defense contractors, de uh, Department of Energy, Aerospace, AI, Computing, Electronics, Photovoltaic, and Technology. The United States claims to recognize the significance of critical minerals in establishing a military bureau called the Defense Logistics Agency but has failed to secure a robust or resilient supply chain and ensure national security. Recently, attempts have been made to get the Biden administration to address or even recognize the lack of strategic stockpiles, reduce dependence on foreign sources, and prevent supply chain disruptions. That is a very good point. We are reliant on silver. Most silver, one, comes out of the ground by accident, and two, is mainly coming from Mexico and Peru and China, Australia, places that we are reliant upon to source our military. There's up to 500 ounces of silver in a single Tomahawk missile, around 200 ounces average. Uh, and, and if you guys really want to dive into this, um, 
this is this is information right here you could look at silver shortage confirmed mexico's silver supplies dropped off a cliff u.s silver stockpile rated by defense department future energy needs depend on our u.s silver development military heist foiled authorities recover stolen silver and arrest suspects there's much more than just those three articles as well i've covered a lot of this stuff but you guys just need to understand the 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 severity of this situation and that's what we are now trying to bring to light. So remember with Biden, we witnessed the most significant drawdown of strategic petroleum reserves, which occurred for no apparent reason other than lowering gas prices before the midterms. Unfortunately, without proper advocacy for and education from the Silver Institute, silver was overlooked as a critical mineral in the eyes of lawmakers. I've been, I've been screaming at the top of my lungs for years now, the importance of silver and how silver is becoming extinct. It's vanishing, poof, and literally, because when they drop that monster box out of the sky, the Tomahawk missile that requires 500 ounces of silver, which there's 500 ounces of silver in a monster box, when that missile gets dropped out of the sky, it is obliterated, never to be recycled or recovered. And since most silver is used for industry, it's thrown away in landfills, never to be recycled. So we are in a situation that is beyond fixable, especially at this point in time when we already have record-breaking supply deficits for the past two years and with a rapidly growing demand and diminishing supply. So... As a result, shareholders and companies such as Hecla Mining, which you guys know Phyllis Baker is the CEO of Hecla Mining. You also have Keith Newmeyer, for, uh, the CEO of First Majestic Silver. You know, a lot of these now face the loss of billions of dollars. The absence of silver as a critical mineral means that these companies lost billions impacting their shareholders in the broader economy. So here's an editor's note. The silver mining companies listed above are not to blame for the Silver Institute's negligence, the following points should be established. One, silver is the most critical mineral due to its physical properties, right? I mean, it's the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and light sensitivity. Number two, short trading on futures silver, uh, the futures market has created an artificially low price of silver. And that, you know, they're, they're talking about um, the COMEX price manipulation, which is real because banks like JP Morgan even got caught. Um, two of their employees got sent to prison, another one for racketeering. Uh, this is real stuff. They paid a $920 million fine. It's Merrill Lynch also. That's another bank. The Dutch bank also got caught for spoofing, which is placing false buy orders on these exchanges um, or false sell orders and canceling the order before it goes through, tricking everyone else on the exchange, seeing fake volume, not understanding that those orders are not real, that that is not actually what is going on, and that, that in return, um, it, it manipulates and it, it fools the other people, the other investors on the exchange to do something and then these banks get away with it. But anyways, banks like JP Morgan and Bank of America that take these reckless short sale positions amidst a massive silver shortage. They understand that they make out like bandits when they cover and if they lose a public will bail them out. Number four, Silver Institute serves the interest of banking, the military, and the Federal Reserve and Department of Treasury elites. Number five, one way they do this is by peddling pathetic research they name the World Silver Survey that no one asked for. Six, misguiding silver investors by publishing grossly deceptive data for the past 20 years has irreversible consequences. That's a good point. And that's why when I see this type of data, I will call it out. I will try to expose the truth when, when do or when I can at any expense. And you guys have known me doing this and I am known as an extremely controversial channel for doing that because I will talk about stuff that nobody else wants to and I will dive into topics that nobody else wants to. And I have done my due diligence doing hours of research showing the data. Numbers don't lie. Well, sometimes they do. But Regardless, I've been proving this for years now. Do you know how many people back in 2016 or 2017, 2018 said, oh, there's no silver shortage or what are you talking about? You know, I was showing article after article after report after report after report. But now all of a sudden now people are finally catching on since mainstream has also acknowledged it. Regardless, it doesn't matter. You guys that watch my channel have known the truth and finally the rest of the world does. Regardless, that's not the point. The point is he says it's irreversible the irreversible consequences. Yes, we make a pretty penny, but at what cost? Silver investors have been misled by an incorrect picture of supply versus band dynamics. The Silver Academy believes the physical silver is strong recommendation because of silver is the, worst, the world's most undervalued commodity, which it definitely is. 
Six, Silver Academy believes buying silver mining equities is a way to gain exposure to silver leveraged when selecting the right miner with high grade silver with the right team in place to bring their metal to the market. Number seven, Silver Institute is scheduled to appear in all gold chain uh, on March 19th to answer questions by Reddit Silver Stackers, which um, he actually just how Andy Sheckman just hopped on. Um, I think two days ago, the video was posted yesterday. Uh, so yeah, Andy Sheckman did uh, appear on a Gold Chain interview, I think with John Forrest Little himself, um, one of the authors that talks about a lot of this. Um, so very interesting stuff. I contacted Andy right after. I was like, you know, what's this about? So we're going to talk about it tomorrow when we do the podcast, maybe before, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, that's going on right now as well. Here's a couple of videos, which they're mentioning some of the suspects naming Specific people, right? Specific people, and also um, naming how the Silver Institutes, uh, some of these people are the largest silver price rigging. Uh, what is the, what is the actual title? Price rigging. I'm I'm assuming it says scandals or something along those lines. Regardless, those are two videos you guys can watch as well. I will link this article in the description. But they're mentioning why is this missing, and this is um, an article from Bloomberg, uh, Hunt for EV Metals to Secure Its Own Supplies, and then also Canada didn't mention silver on the critical minerals list as well. U.S. bid to loosen China's grip on key metals for is stalling. That's pretty interesting. Shanghai Silver versus Comex Silver, which Andy Sheckman's talked about a lot, is we um, we hold down the price, which, like Andy says, price is the greatest tool of misdirection. Hold down the price, trick everyone to think that silver's not doing doing anything, that it, it, it's worthless. Buy all of it up while the price is still cheap, right? Someone like Elon Musk, you better hope that he's, uh, well, one, of course, someone like Elon's going to be buying boatloads of silver. He needs it for SpaceX and Tesla and Solar City. I don't know if he still does the Solar City thing, but you know those two companies alone. But think about him having to find a source and that source charging him higher premiums or prices. So no, you know what he did? He bought a silver mine himself, cut out the middleman. It makes a lot of sense. But on that, he's just the mascot. Think about a larger scale. And think about if Elon didn't have the silver mine, his cost of production to go up. Mike Maloney sent him a personal letter calculating how much it would cost if he buys silver at $20 versus $100 and how much more his cost of production would be since he's trying to push this many Teslas by the year 2030. It's in the billions upon billions of dollars. But think about him on a grander scale. And then think about that on a military scale. This is something you cannot overlook. You have to be careful because one, silver is literally the most important, not only just commodity, I could even just say thing right now, in terms of production or in, in terms of, um, of uh, uses. We're not, I'm not talking about you know, silver or food or silver or guns. I'm talking about we need the silver to make the guns. Right? We need the silver to make the missiles, the satellites, the rockets, the nukes, the tanks. It's in everything. And you, if I even clicked on some of these other articles, you could literally see, you know, uh, turn your silver bullets, uh, turn in your, your silver into bullets. What if they need silver for some of this stuff and uh, they, they can't get it out of the ground? There's only so much silver in the Earth's crust. It's harder and harder to find. Where are they going to get it from? Where are they going to get it from? Right. Recycling doesn't even put a dent in the one point two something billion ounces that we need, which literally shows right here. Right. This is data. This is data showing. This is data. You cannot make this type of stuff up. Look here. Look here. I'm going to show you. Uh, these are OK. One, this is a timeline from the Manhattan en uh, Engineering District. Uh, our research shows it's called the Silver Project. Now, one enormous gamble, early 1940s, you can go all the way through, and then it goes into the Secretary of War's request, 1942, and it goes all the way down. Silver withdrawal begins October 30th, 1942. First bars are taken from the West Point Bullion Depository, and that's talking about military. And then you can keep going all the way down, all this happening in the 1940s. This is real. 
But then the draining of the silver strategic stockpile, and here's how it all went down. They talk about the Manhattan Project alone used over 403 million ounces of silver. Then more silver from the, uh, the stockpile was drawn for rockets, bombs, shells, torpedoes, submarines, tanks, spotter jets, drones, spacecraft, communication devices, night vision goggles, etc. Hide all the massive raids silver used by the military contractors and aerospace companies. And that, that they'd mysteriously stopped reporting silver use in 1996. That's another point. The Silver Institute, when they post their annual numbers, they do not include uh, military or aerospace in their numbers. So when you see 1.2 billion ounces, it's actually more than that because they don't incorporate those types of numbers, which we know there's a lot of silver used for those. So there's a situation going on that you have to be aware of. And uh, if you're not, then you're missing a huge chunk of the puzzle. You're missing a huge piece of the puzzle when trying to look at Silver, silver's true value because fundamentals, supply and demand, low supply, high demand pushes the price up. Fundamentals, especially something that has intrinsic value, value within itself, fundamentals, supply and demand. That is where the majority of silver's potential comes from, much more than gold, much farther than gold. It's not gold that the military is looking for, it's silver. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Um, you know, you guys can check this stuff out. I'll link the article in the description, but remember, just remember, if you guys want to see me jump out of an airplane at however many thousands upon that, I think, you know, I know airplanes fly at 30,000 feet. I don't think I'll be jumping out 30,000 feet. I don't know what the, whatever, how many thousands of feet in the air while announcing your name or potentially your name, two of your names, mid-flight to win silver, then make sure you guys subscribe. And the prizes are not small. Last time we gave away several tubes of maples and eagles. I've given away one ounce gold coins before. You think my 100,000 subscriber giveaway is going to be small? No. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.